Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Academia Podcast. I'm Sean O'Loughlin. I'm Justin Grant. And I'm Maddie Cassidy. And we have finally made it to the part two of our Swai Pangasius series. River Swai Cobbler. series. Yeah, Swai series. I like that. Ooh. Uh, the Species Spotlight. This part two. Swai series Species Spotlight. You guys love the Species Spotlight episodes. Every time we release the Species Spotlight episodes, it gets so many more downloads <laughs> than all the other episodes. <laughs> it borderline like breaks the internet. Uh, <laughs> you guys love the Species Spotlight episodes and you love the Career Pathways episodes. Yeah, those two are standouts for sure. Yeah, we're going to need to do some more of those. But this is part two of the Swai Species Spotlight and um, we are happy to welcome back Denise Gershon to talk about the market side of Swai. It's not as long of a conversation because Swai itself is an interesting fish. We had a nice long talk a couple of weeks ago about that fish. And this is more about what's going on in the marketplace, uh, how it has been affected by COVID-19 and all that good stuff that we love to talk about on this show. So, so if you haven't listened to that first episode, make sure to check it out. That's right. Go back, listen to part one if you missed it, and then come back and check this episode out. Make sure you subscribe to Aquademia wherever you listen, wherever podcasts are podcasts. We are there. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get every episode downloaded automatically to your device as soon as they are released. And we would love it if you could leave us a rating and review if you listen on Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, all of the above. If it's possible to leave a rating and review, we would love it if you could do that. Yep. Two ways you can reach us. Social at Aquademia Pod. Or send us an email, podcast at aquaculturealliance.org. Also, in this episode, we will announce the winners of our trivia contest and make sure that we get their information to send out some swag from GAA and Aquademia. So stay tuned and keep listening. If you want to know if you won or not, you're going to have to listen to the whole episode. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Welcome, Denise. Welcome to the Aquademia podcast. Our diet is hurting the environment in myriad ways. I mean, we desperately need to eat more seafood. This is a pioneering industry with a whole lot of people who have really good ideas and a lot of experience and are unafraid. Aquademia is your go-to podcast for a fresh take on all things seafood. So welcome back. Part two of Species Spotlight for Swai. I know people have been waiting for this episode because we had to push it back a couple of weeks. We were trying to make sure that we had all the good information and the best person to come on. But we really needed to get this episode in because people love the Species Spotlight episodes. Yeah, one of the most popular ones by far. People love them. And mm -hmm. you know what else people love? When Denise Gershon joins us on the podcast. Clearly, she is just the MVP of the podcast. She's carrying us. So we decided to bring her back. So Denise, <laughs> I thanks for coming I on. I am again. just riding on your coattails, but thank you very much. I think you guys do a great job and it's fun always speaking with you. Before we get into it, I got to give a little disclaimer. If Justin and myself sound a little bit different, a little bit weird, maybe a little bit muffled, it's because we're actually back in the office studio where we used to record all the time. We are sitting six feet apart and we are both wearing masks. So that may alter our voices a little bit, may make us sound a little bit more difficult to understand. So I apologize for that. But we are keeping it safe and, uh, you know, doing what we can to make sure that neither of us gets sick. So that's my quick disclaimer before we get into it. My second disclaimer is I know a lot of people are really excited to hear who won the swag pack. We did a trivia game in our last episode. And we had a lot of entries, a lot more entries than I anticipated. Yeah, thank you guys so much for all entering. It was really cool to see everybody participating and responding. There was some serious competition. And <laughs> so we have randomly picked two winners and we will go through the questions and the answers and we will announce those winners at the end of the show. So if you want to know if you won or not, you're going to need to stay listening all the way to the end. Yeah, don't scrub to the end because then it, you won't be able to hear it. That's right. Just kidding. Sure. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Good try. You I just tried. told him how to cheat. <laughs> I know. Cut that out. Cut that out. <laughs> um, but yeah, we will announce the winners of the uh, Aquademia Trivia Contest giveaway at the end of the episode. So let's get right into it. Denise, thank you for coming back to talk about Swai 
Pengasius, River Cobbler, Photoshop EI, whatever, whatever <laughs> name we choose to give it. Thank you for joining us again. We really appreciate you coming back on. We are here today to talk about the SWI market and what's going on in that. So can you give us a quick rundown of where we left off last week and uh, kind of, you know, a, a quick reminder of the species that we're talking about. And then I'm going to let you just get right into it because you are, you know, you're our species spotlight queen right now. So so we are speaking of SWI, Pangasius hypothalamus. And it is the fish that so many people globally have eaten and don't even know it, especially in the United States. Gotcha. And it dominates in the food service sector, which is your restaurants, your healthcare, your um, in areas where um, it's a white fish that has a white, mild flavor and... I can tell you if you've, and I said it before, if you've eaten in a buffet line and had fish, or if you've had a fish taco, if you've had fish, just um, fish and chips in Europe, if you've had hot pot in China, if you've had um, fish on a buffet line um, in Las Vegas, more than likely you have had swai. But it goes under the radar. It's one of those white fish. It's farm raised. And it goes under the radar in the fact that cod, traditionally in the United States, cod, haddock, tilapia come before pangasius, and I should say striped pangasius, swai. And it's a fish that, if you think about it, it comes out of three major provinces in Vietnam, and it's 1.4 million tons in 2009. It's a lot of fish. That is a lot of fish to export. And it's really dominated um, coming out of Vietnam. Um, There are other countries that do it, but Vietnam dominates the export market for sure. So what's going on uh, in the the SWI marketplace right now? Obviously, every market is a little wonky with uh, everything that's going on in the world and with uh, COVID-19 and all that. But what what are we looking at for the SWI market right now? Is it, I mean, like you said, is it just completely dominated and you just will be hard-pressed to find SWI from anywhere else besides Vietnam? Yes, I would say that for sure. Um, Bangladesh does a bit, Indonesia does a bit, India does a bit. Um, but it really, if you look at the um, imports to the United States and elsewhere in the world, you will see Vietnamese product. That's COVID, irregardless of COVID, that's just the way it is. And um, as I explained in the previous episode, it's because the Vietnamese have succeeded in doing a phenomenal job at rearing this fish, continuous improvement, and um, they have a lot of water, they have a lot of warm water, and they've got the right conditions for it. So... Um, But COVID has played a really interesting role in this, in the fact that Vietnam's done really well in terms of COVID. And when I say it's done really well in terms of COVID, what I'm speaking of is number of cases and um, number of cases and deaths have been very, very low. And the reason for that is that the Vietnamese had experience with SARS Um, and other um, pandemics, and the government took really swift action. They didn't wait for HUI to come out. They looked at data from internally and externally, and they had rigorous controls, quarantining, um, really effective public communication, and um, they've done extremely well. The communication that they have had is protect yourself, protect your community. And it's really that simple, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, honestly. And you've got to remember, too. It's not um, political US. It's that simple. <laughs> yeah. You know, wear a mask, wash your hands, you know, um, keep a social distance. Um, but what also about the Vietnamese is you'll see people traditionally wearing masks, irregardless if you're in Ho Chi Minh City of COVID. Um, Traditionally, um, the Vietnamese, um, they 
they're not kissers or embracers when they see people. They tend to keep a little bit more of a social space. Um, and they realize they knew early on what they were up against. So I've got to say kudos to the Vietnamese for handling this as well and as swiftly as they have. Um, they've also gone so far as um, using apps. Um, there is one that was mentioned, um, Blue Zone app, that's in English and Vietnamese. And there's another one that is um, no Kovi um, app. And it really allows you to just um, be able to identify, you know, your, where it is in your community and the like early on. So they've done very well. And they do health declarations if they're traveling. They do, um, they do um, if they have meetings. And where Pangasius is produced and within the plants, they've actually taken extra steps. Temperature checks twice a day. Um, they've also, they have to do a health declaration um, before they enter the plant. Things of that nature that are new to us. Um, they've always done the health declaration, um, but the temperature twice a day, those types of things are, you know, over and above what they've had before. So all of that said, um, Vietnam's done very well, but what's impacted the market is food Everybody service. Else. Yeah. And the demand. Mm. Okay. Um, there was a big pull on product early on, um, call it panic mining, if you will, and getting product on the water. Um, and then when things kind of settled out, it was, okay, now where are we at? And then all of a sudden, you know, pushback, like, I don't really need this product because my restaurants aren't taking it, that type of a thing. Mm, and when you're working with animals, fish grow. And they fish, especially with swai, grows pretty fast. And... What I found that was really interesting last night, I was listening to a shrimp webinar and they were talking about... This is what we do for people who may not be in the industry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you work in the industry. Sometimes you just casually listen to shrimp webinars at like nine o'clock at night. <laughs> on a, Honestly, on a yeah. yeah. And that, that's exactly what <laughs> it was. Just a nice little bedtime story. Yeah. To kind of wee you into you know into sleep but that's actually funny that you say that i think everybody does it but i guess they don't <laughs> um you had asked me during one of the during our last podcast you know what is why do people not know swy as well and why do buyers kind of stay away from it well in listening to shrimp You've got producers in Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, China, Ecuador. And I'm listening to this podcast and it was like they can draw on product all over the world. Whereas the risk here with SWI is that predominantly comes from one particular country. And we have an expression in the United States and um, it's called putting all of your eggs in one basket. And... What it means is um, if you put all of your eggs in one basket, I don't know how else to say it, <laughs> and you drop said basket, um, you're not going to have any eggs. They're all going to crack. And that's one of the risks with SWI is that you've got really a huge concentration of production in one general area. The good news on that is that the, Vietna the Vietnamese have done very well with that um, during COVID. So pricing has dropped because demand has dropped. And then you get into this little catch-22 of, well, if the pricing drops, are the farmers going to seed the ponds? Because are they gonna make money? And that's when things get a little bit wonky, for lack of a better word. Um, because there's uncertainty in the market. Hmm. And the farmer says, am I going to make money? Am I going to do all of this work? And am I going to profit from it? And or do I hold off and not stock? And so it's going to be very interesting to see how the market shifts. 
Pangasius really started in, um, I should say, Swai started, sales started primarily in Europe, okay, and fish and chip market. And then it shifted, the Vietnamese shifted their market to the United States. Okay, then the U.S. started to dominate the market, the demand side. And then what happened was there was trade barriers um, and other complications that made it difficult. And they shifted some of that production or the, the marketing to China. And China started to take a lot of the product. So you have these three, you have these three major markets, Europe, U.S., and China. And what you can see is you see how the demand because of COVID really kind of dropped off and dropped off dramatically in different areas. So from what you saw in China was like an 18% drop, you know, Mm. and when I say an 18% drop, I'm talking, you know, your March, June numbers um, from global numbers. Um, So like your January to June year over year, start drop 18 percent u.s 25 okay wow yeah it just boom it and that's significant and it was funny because and i keep going back to the shrimp because shrimp tends to have issues um if they have a disease issue and um they've had times where 30 percent of the market has dropped off and they were speaking of, you know, 15, 20% drops in different countries in terms of demand because of food service. So those numbers, when you start getting into that 25%, those are really high. That's mm-hmm. when you start to say, yeah. okay, I've got some major changes going on here. Um, Europe, you saw the drop. UK, ironically enough, um, went up a bit. And the reason being is because it's sold in the retail market. It's more in the oh, retail market mm-hmm. than it is in the food service. Now. And, and how is it marketed over there? Is it marketed as a different name or, you know, what is. Sometimes it's marketed as river cobbler. Sometimes it's marketed as swai. Sometimes it's just marketed as fish. So and why, why do you think that it, in, in that specific area, it's part of the retail market marketplace and everywhere else it seems to be food service what is what's different about that market i think because it started there and it matured a little bit there um that's a really good question um but i would say that um familiarity is there with the fish whereas with the others it's a little bit there was so many issues in the u.s um there hasn't been a big marketing push for it Hmm. Um, and I think people always were kind of a little hesitant to put a lot of marketing dollars behind it because they didn't know what was going to happen with the tariffs. They didn't know how things were going to go. But right, what's but then the other side of that is, do you okay. even need to put dollars into it, into marketing it, if it if it's such a massive part of food service? You're already making those sales. You're already shelling out all of this fish. That you, you, do you even need to market it? if you're making the sales into the food service sector? I think that people gravitate to what they know. And when they don't know the word swai, or they don't know striped pangasius or suchi, as it can be marketed in the United States um, per the FDA, it can make it really, it can make it a little bit tricky. Hmm. Well, Um, you referenced it as... You know, it's the fish that you've had that you probably didn't know that you have had. So I'm sure that swai, pangasius, river cobbler is, is not the only fish species. I know that's what we're talking about during this episode, but the, not the only species that is struggling during these times to in the marketplace. And I think of where I live in Maine and I, I think of the lobstermen that have a huge you know, market into retail services and restaurants and how they've and they're they're still struggling, but they found value in reaching directly to consumers and not trying to funnel through that whole 
marketplace. And because it's a well-known species and people know how to prepare it, especially in Maine, that they're they finding some success that. in being able to, to to make that those connections and whether it's opening up their own mini website that allows them to buy direct or op- whatever it is that that's something that people recognize know what they're getting and and it's it's it, it's helping both the the consumers that want to get that on their plate but it's also helping the fisherman who's able to maintain a living um swai doesn't necessarily have that luxury one it's exported here or imported here sorry uh but also the name's not recognizable like you said denise so if you all of a sudden start throwing it in the grocery stores or and put any of those many names that we're calling it, people will get confused that might not sell. And um, I'm going to go back to my stats just for one more second, because I think that these are uh, these are markets that I didn't mention, but should be mentioned. Mexico, Brazil and Colombia, those numbers went down 60 percent, 40 percent, 45 percent respectively 60%. Wow. Yeah. Well, you got to remember and is that over about, the same time period? Yes, all over the same time period. Wow. And think about how hard hit Latin America has been with mm-hmm. COVID. Okay? So you really have um markets, you know, dropping, you know, in terms of demand. Um Sean or I should say Justin to your point um, you think, oh, okay, well, if it's not going to go to a food service, just put it in a package and sell it on shelf. But it takes a long time to develop that packaging. One of the bottlenecks that the Vietnamese had wasn't fish, it was packaging. Hmm. So here they are, they're trying to take fish out of the water and they've got to produce you know, the packaging that the fish goes into and the artwork and all of that, and that created a bottleneck early on. Um, So there's a lot that comes into play that you don't even think about. Like you think, oh, you've got fish, you can sell it. You know, when your supply chain is down, and what I mean by that is your trucking, your shipping, you know, your production lines and the like, it can get really difficult just to get fish out of the country. What I anticipate or what I've, from my research and my, um, my conversations that I've been having with people all over the world, is that they're expecting total output to be down only about 5%, which is great. But the, inti- the thought process is, is that pricing will start to bump up because there's going to be fewer fish in the water and demand will come back on and we'll see how that all plays out but there's so many unknowns um in terms of covid and how things are going to go globally be it in china europe in the us and in central and south america it's really difficult it's a really difficult equation and in listening to the shrimp markets last night Especially, um, I felt better coming on this webinar or coming on this podcast because I was thinking to myself, you know, somebody has insight that I don't have. And I'm realizing, no, this there's a lot of unknowns. And <laughs> it's you. You're that person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. You are the person and that I, you're thinking about. I think what also differentiates the situation that we're in is that in the past, the markets have all kind of eventually self-corrected and the demand has come back but with this it's it's almost like the equivalent of the early 20th century when there was all of these huge global events that were going on and it's it's kind of an earth-shattering event that we're going through and because of that who knows how the markets will be in the future like retail might be forever changed because of this and yeah. which which could be either super beneficial for why or not so. Mm-hmm. It's, it's certainly going to be interesting to see how it does um, globally. I have no doubt that um, this fish has, it, it's blown my mind um, just when I thought, oh, you know, it, they've changed markets or they've had just, you know, disruptions in the production and or 
political issues. It's the comeback kid. I will say that. So um, I, I don't think that COVID's going to stop it. I think that they're going to continue and they will. Um, the Vietnamese have been very um, clever and adept at adapting to changes in the marketplace. Um, and I think they've proven that time and time again. Well, if you have a fish that is so easy to, if you Listen. figured out how to easily grow it and quickly grow it, I mean, then when things start to bounce back and we need to start making more and more food, you're going to go with those ones that you got figured out already. So I don't, I don't see it going. Yeah, that's a really point. good point. Mm hmm. So really, that's what I have on Swai. Uh, that's it in a nutshell right now. The demand is has dropped off. We don't know where the demand is going. Production numbers, pricing is low. We expect the pricing to come back up because we are anticipating that demand will pick up. And it's about a six month grow out situation. So it's a pretty fast turnaround. We don't have a similar situation for, you know, salmon markets can be a little bit trickier because it takes so much longer to grow out a cold water mm -hmm. fish, whereas swai can rebound a lot faster. But I think that gives you an overall idea of what's happening with swai um, globally. And it is a global fish and it is consumed and it will be very interesting to see how um, demand picks up in China, how demand picks up in the U.S. Will demand pick up in the U.S. on the food service side? Restaurants are opening, but we're coming into the colder weather. People won't be eating outside because it's simply too cold. Yeah, will they be so, able to maintain what they And have? who will be the clever person who gets the packaging and gets the marketing to market it in the retail space in the United States. So Denise, you talk with people all around the world. Yes. On a regular basis. Do you know- I talked to India this morning. Do you know, how, how's India? Hi, India. Nice, <laughs> nice to talk to you guys. <laughs> Doesn't it sound more important? Um, Rel. Do you know if SWI producers are taking that route? Are they trying to get the packaging and get it on the shelves in the West or you know, you, when you say who's going to get lucky and get that packaging sort issues sorted out, is is that something that people are actually actively trying to make happen? Do you know? I know that they are in China in because China. it was the I've seen product that um, on shelf um, and moving it forward um, in the retail space in China. Um, in the U.S., you're starting to see it more and more, but um, I don't know whether it's not going to be an on-off switch. Right. I will oh, say yeah. that. I think um, that's a, an issue that we have in the West, and I don't know if this is a perception that that is happening in other parts of the world, but a, a lot of times when it, when certain things happen on a global scale like this, you know, I, I think... COVID is a great example of this. People, especially in the U.S., they look at things as, as black and white and, and off on-off switches. So, you know, when COVID hit, I think everybody had the mentality of, okay, we'll have to stay in our homes and wear masks for like a few months and then everything will go back to normal. Yes. You know, once school starts, every they, like we'll go, we'll have a, a tough summer, but then we'll be back to normal at the end of that. And it's it's not black and white. There's lots of shades of gray and it's, and it's like that with everything, uh, including these seafood marketplaces. And I think if you try to look at it as, well, we just got to ride this out until the marketplace, till the the you know the demand increases. Well, there's a lot more that goes into it than that. So, I'm glad you brought that up. It's an interesting, an interesting philosophy to explore. Yeah, and the farmers have to stock, and you know, it's the supply is supposed to be down, and it's always trying to keep that balance of that supply demand balance, so that you know, and keeping pricing where it needs to be so that the farmers are making money and the cons it hits the price point for the consumer. And that's always the, the tricky part. And that's the dance that we dance. I was going to just point our listeners, if they haven't listened to the part one of this, the Species Spotlight series, that they can learn, and I'm going to repeat it again a little bit now, but we do talk a lot about what this fish tastes like, why it's in the market that it is in, why you can find it, like you said, at buffets, fish tacos, uh, might be served school cafeterias, school cafeterias, college and universities. 
Uh, it has that flavor profile that people are used to. That's like that mild white fish, like a haddock. I guess you could compare haddock, it to tilapia. Any white fish, really, right? I, I wonder if it and would it's... be. Go ahead, Denise. No, I was just gonna say um, it's almost that fifth choice because you'd look at it: cod, haddock, pollock, tilapia. Okay, fifth choice. You know, in terms of the white fish. Um, and it's really dependent on, okay, wait a minute, what's happening in the cod market? What's happening in the haddock market? Are the fishing boats going out? Are they getting, how are their landings? What are their quotas? Yeah, if prices How's go up for pricing? something like cod or haddock, exactly. companies may say, well, you know, maybe these next shipments, we're going to replace the cod or haddock with um, swai because the consumer's not going to know the difference and we'll market it as fish. <laughs> and uh, we'll be able to pay a whole lot less. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I, one correction, I can't go, I'd be remiss if I didn't say it. Um, there was one that I, I was saying that um, swai was the number six consumed fish in the United States. And I, it drove me crazy that I had the order. Um, I omitted one and it was the obvious one, which was tuna. Ah. Um, so if you oh, look yeah, at tuna. it, you, yeah, you've <laughs> got, yeah, you've got shrimp, salmon, tuna, tilapia, Alaska, um, Alaska po Pollock, and then, um, Pangasius. So that was driving me nuts that I couldn't think of that while we were, while we were taping, um, the other day. And I said, I, I've got to make that correction when I come back on. Well, I'm glad we were able to give you the opportunity. Too. No, you guys are great. I, I really enjoy <laughs> speaking to you. Um, you make me laugh and you actually give me pause because you think of questions that um, I, I don't think of. And I give you a lot of credit for um, the podcasts that you do. And I enjoy them. And I can't wait until I have a commute again because that's really <laughs> when I have you guys listening. But it's kind of funny. I'll have you guys on in the background. So um, whether you realize it or not. You're in my home office um, from time to <laughs> no. I'm dead serious. I'm, I I do that. So um, yes, people are listening That's and they cool. are learning, and you're doing a great job. So please keep it up. Well, thank you. We appreciate thank that, you, and Denise. we appreciate you coming on the show. We love having you on as well. And when we've had you on our webinars from GAA too, that's also been super helpful. We appreciated that. Um, believe it or not, we had a listener who emailed us and said they had like a 10 hour road trip or something like that. And they listened to us the whole way. Do you remember that Maddie? When we got that email, <gasps> that's mm -hmm. phenomenal. Can you imagine 10 hours of our voices just in your ear holes nonstop? That's just, <laughs> I, I, I am sorry to her. Um, I feel bad for that. Yeah. Topic. Fell asleep at the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, you can't fall asleep with the grating sound of my voice. Mm. And pumped into your ears. It's just, Not at all. Just too bad. Not at all. You, you ask good questions and you're getting information out there about seafood. So I am very pleased and I will promote it anytime. So well, thank you, Denise. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe, everybody. And Denise, do you want to stick around for the uh, the announcement of our um giveaway giveaway winners? Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. I want to hear. We should have given her the winner so she could have announced it. Yeah, we probably should have. Uh, that would have been right. cool. I have the winners here. So um, we'll, we'll go through the questions really quick. If you missed it, two weeks ago we did an episode where we did a trivia contest where we asked a, a, a couple questions that if you are a regular listener to Aquademia, you should definitely know the answer to these. And they were not that difficult. Um, so we will. What, what happened is we had everyone send in their answers, and everyone that got all three answers right were put into a pool and we assigned a number to each of them, and then we randomly picked some winners. And we had tons of responses, overwhelming response. I was not prepared for it, um, but we got it, we got it under control. We didn't have an episode last week because it was Labor Day, which is a bank holiday here in the U.S., so we, we weren't working. So there was no episode last week. So now that bought us a little more time to make sure that we got everything together. So we will go through the questions real quick. And then we will announce the winners. And if you are the winner, make sure that you contact us again and send us your mailing address so we can get you your swag pack. So the first question was in regards to our episode where we had, I think it was episode 42, something like that. 
I try, try to remember. Around there. We had like an epic uh, trailer, movie trailer. <laughs> Episode 42. We talked with Mikhail Billick, and he is in a program, a graduate program for aquatic food systems, something like that. And we asked what university offers that program, That what university is he going to? And the answer was the University of New England, which is up in Maine. So that was the answer to question number one. Question number two, Maddie, do you want to do that? That was your question, I believe. I don't remember it like exactly how I phrased it. it. I remember the answer. So question number two was asking what species is beginning to be farmed to help with the COVID-19 vaccine creation and testing. And the answer to that is horseshoe crabs. And that was from a few episodes ago, not too long ago. Yeah. Maybe episode like Yeah, a few episodes ago. Go back, check it out. Uh, we talk about the blue blood of horseshoe crabs. Super interesting. Wicked cool. Really, really great episode. I, I, I loved that conversation. I had a lot of fun with that. And then the last one was Justin. The fun one. Oh, yeah. They're all, they're, they were all fun. <laughs> uh, question three was, what language do I usually sound off with at the end of each episode? We learned something about this, that there are multiple <laughs> languages that use this, this phrase, but I do sign off with a, a ciao uh, to represent some of my Italian heritage. But we... S- we accepted yeah. other languages. If... if- if you submitted a language that uses this term as a goodbye, we accepted that. And one of our winners did send in a, a different language that we accepted because Justin doesn't really know what language he's speaking. He just yeah. says it's, words. Usually it's just broken English. <laughs> he's just, <laughs> he just a talking head. Words. Just kidding. <laughs> we love Justin. He was He's paramount to this, to this uh, project we have going on. So our first winner. Drum roll. Drum roll, please. Our very first winner for this giveaway is... Vivian Mazako. Make sure, Vivian, make sure you send us your mailing address to the same email that you sent before, and we will be sure to send you your sweet swag pack. Woohoo! Thanks, Vivian. And our second winner is Gabriel Luiz. And he he said that Justin signs off in Portuguese. Did you know that you were speaking Portuguese? I'm a man of many talents. Clearly. (laughs) So, Gabriel and Vivian. Make sure you send us your information and we will get that stuff out to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much for playing and thank you to everybody that engaged with us and sent in answers and, uh, you know, keep sending those emails. Keep talking with us. We may not get back to you right away. It may take us a a little while to respond to you, but we try to respond to everyone if we can. So podcast at aquaculturealliance.org. And this isn't our only, I mean, we've done several giveaways and there'll be more on the horizon. So you know, like Sean said, stay in communication with us. Let us know if there's content ideas mm-hmm. that you have, if you want to be a guest on the show, or if you just you like what you're listening to, uh, we want to hear from you. Yeah, I won't give it away, but we did have someone who uh, has written some cookbooks and offered to donate to a couple cookbooks to be given away as well. So we probably, we're not going to include that those with this giveaway, but there will be another giveaway coming in the future with some cookbooks so that'll be pretty can cool. we enter that because i would like those no we can't <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no the answer is no thank you all so much for listening remember if you want to get in contact with us justin is the man to tell you how to do that yes we are on social twitter to be exact at at aquademia pod and also you can reach us through email podcast at aquaculturealliance.org and we would love it if you could leave us a rating and review on whichever podcast platform that you listen to us on and make sure you subscribe tell your friends and we'll talk to you next week congratulations again to our winners yep ciao